Hello everyone! Before we get to today's amazing video, let's do an amazing giveaway. Most giveaways I've noticed are kind of boring, they're not really big or exciting, there's something. So today's is going to be a little bit more exciting. $100 Steam giveaway. That's right, a full $100. So like, subscribe, and the way to enter, leave a comment. That's all you have to do. I will post the winner's comment here in two days from now on Monday. So that will make someone's Monday a little brighter. So today we're finally going to be answering some of the big questions that people have been asking me forever. Like, why don't I bother with scarecrows when I do mega crops? How many scarecrows does it take to cover your field? Is it worth it? Everything like that. As you can see, if I try and place the scarecrow, that's what it covers. As you can see, it doesn't really fill the area nicely. There's still a little void in the corner. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out, get the layout right. But the first thing I've got to do is clear my field so we can at least get the first crop down. The way I'm going to do this, of course, is bombs. Now, to start this idea, I'm simply going to plant a mega crop and let it grow for a set amount of time, probably two weeks, and then see how many crows have eaten how many crops and get an idea of how many I lose per day on average, and then compare that to how many scarecrows it would take to cover those and at what point that ratio would be in your favor or not. I'm really curious to actually see. I've always been under the impression that the scarecrows actually take up more room than what the crows would eat anyway. Aside from that, people have also suggested that if you put scarecrows in the places that crows have eaten, that actually makes up the difference anyway. I also have to get rid of these annoying animals. If you didn't see yesterday's video, you might want to check that out because I was able to do some amusing things with those poor animals. I just realized I walked all the way to Robin and I did not clear out the animals from the building so I can't demolish all of them. But at least for once I do have a fun way of getting rid of the animals. I can just butcher them. This works so much faster than just selling them one by one. Then you have to go into the menu, choose to sell them. With this, all you gotta do is chop them down a few times and they blow up into meat. The barns are gone. I've decided I'm gonna do this for 14 days, so I'm gonna grow ancient fruit. It's not gonna be mature in 14 days, but that's gonna give me enough of a time frame that I know how many crows are gonna eat it. And 14 days is also half a month, that's two weeks. It's a very even number to work with. And I'm going to plant them on the 10th, that way we have a nice even starting point. So we just got to let them grow till the 24th and see what the crows have done. Taking a look around, I think I've gotten every space I can. I've got to be pretty careful with it here because if I miss one space and blame it on the crows, that will kind of skew the results. Not in a major way, but I do want to do this properly. The only spot I cannot clear out is where the stupid statue is stuck and I just can't find any way to remove that yet. So that's okay, that shouldn't make a difference. Now, luckily I have my handy dandy tractor, so that's going to help me plant this much faster. That was fast. Now I'm just going to do a little look around, make sure I'm not missing any spots because they can be pretty hard to see. I'm actually just going to keep on seeding or trying to seed, that way if I do accidentally go over a spot, I will fill the seeds anyway. I did go around the perimeter and around all the small areas first, that way I got those out of the way because those are usually where I'd miss the spots. So far it's looking pretty good. Right, I think I've got that under control. Now, we're just going to skip ahead two full weeks till the 24th. That should be another Wednesday and see what the crows have done. I am, of course, going to water these every day because normally you would. And that takes so much work with a mega crop. I mean, you wouldn't even believe how long that takes. You might also be wondering if the lightning is going to skew the results because if lightning happens and strikes a crop, it does the same thing as a crow. Well, that's not going to happen because I'm going to make sure it's sunny every day. Therefore, lightning cannot happen. So far, it's been one week. I just want to take a look around, see what the crows have done so far to, to try and get an idea of what they can eat on a week to week basis. And so far, it doesn't look like they've been very busy at all. So far, I've only been able to find one space that the crows have eaten. That seems like pretty low numbers considering it's an entire field worth of crop and it's been an entire week so far. The one spot is over here on the left. I figured they'd be more than that. This spot right here. So I'm wondering if there's something else that's affecting this. I've been thinking about it. I cannot think of anything. So I guess I'm just going to play through another week and see if the crows eat any more. Maybe they're actually more likely to eat the crop the closer it gets to its maturity. I'm not really sure. Here we are, the big day, the 24th of summer. It has been two full weeks, so let's go see if the crows have done any damage. So far, I figured there'd be at least a few spots missing. Ah, there's a crow. Here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. A few spots right there. Another spot there. It actually might be a little bit hard to count all these. I think what I do in order to see them and count them better is actually use my pick to de-hoe the spot. Yes, I'm going to de-hoe my field a little bit. That way I know where the spots are and I can count them as I go. I just hopefully don't hit any of my existing crops. Upon investigating my field, I find 10 crops missing due to crows. That's 10 over 14 days. I'm just going to do one more look to see if there's any more that I might have missed. 
Obviously, they should be easy to see now because I've highlighted them by de-hoeing them. It definitely is curious to note though, over the first week I only found one spot missing, but over the second week there's presumably another 9 eaten. So clearly they're not consistent, but I didn't really expect them to be. That might be a factor of luck for the day, or just luck in general. Now, the ratio so far is 0.71 crops eaten per day, so that's not quite one. So if you're going to do a crop like this, you're probably going to lose a crop every second day. That's going to vary a little bit, but overall, that's going to be your average. Now, I think I do actually want to take this for one more week to see if that trend continues. Another thing I should have considered doing was the gold clock, because the weeds on the last two days there finally started getting into my crop. Now, that shouldn't skew the result in a bad way. Obviously, I know if there's a weed there, it wasn't the crows that ate it, so I don't think that's going to have an impact on the result. And that crow actually landed in the same spot as before, I think. Either that or the spot got dehoed, but whatever the case, let's do a count today. That would be where the weeds busted in. Obviously, that wasn't a crow's, that was me being an idiot. Now, unless I can find any more spots, I think I've gotten another 5 for the week, so the ratio continues about 0.7 per day, or you're going to lose 5 per week. 5 per week is the magic number here. I'm just going to count all these to make sure my numbers are adding up. Right, well, it's a good thing I did a second walk to do a total count, because instead of 15, there are actually 22. The crows must have eaten them early enough on that it dehold the spots naturally. So that's 22, so the ratio definitely picked up big time over that third week, which now pushes the ratio to just over one a day. But it's close enough that you can consider that one a day that the crows are going to eat. But now the big question, how many scarecrows does it take to cover this entire thing? Now, the result of this may surprise me. The scarecrows do cover a huge area, but there's so many weird little corners and edges, you're going to have to double up on scarecrows in spots. Every time you double up on a scarecrow, it's going to eat up another spot that a crow would have eaten. For example, when I go to place this one up here, trying to do it as efficiently as possible, it's going to be a debate whether or not I put it like that, or put it more upwards, what part do I try and cover? There's always going to be a little gap left over that I'm going to need to overlap a scarecrow with anyway. I think to start, I'm going to put it right there because it covers the top very nicely and the bottom. It doesn't really leave any awkward gaps. I can kind of build off that. This might not be the best scarecrow setup, but I'm going to do my best to get it as good as possible. That's the first scarecrow down. This is actually going to take a while to figure this out, but I'll get it eventually. Already, I've gone through three scarecrows and I've only covered this little corner of the farm. I've zoomed way out to see this. But this was my theory all along, that every scarecrow is going to have to overlap so big that you can have so many scarecrows out there. And I know a lot of you are going to be saying, well, don't worry about these few crops, but that's the whole point of doing a scarecrow is you avoid losing one or two crops per scarecrow. So it's a really fine ratio here. Again, I think it's in favor of just not doing the scarecrows because if you're putting scarecrows here to cover an extra three here and you got to put another scarecrow here and here, you're just doing more damage than good. The crows will eat less than what you can put down, but we'll see in the end. And being that the shape of a scarecrow is more or less circular, you're just going to see a lot of overlap when you're trying to get little slivers in there. The shape is getting a little nicer now, but anytime I have to deal with little corners like this one up here, I'm going to get other little edges elsewhere. There's just no way to make this fit actually nicely. For example, right here, I'm going to have to tuck this one way up there just to make sure I get that one up on my door. That leaves an ugly sliver where I'm standing currently. And the thing to remember for a crop like this, it's only been three weeks. These things still aren't ready to go. They're going to be another week generally before they're ready. So if I use up more than 21 scarecrows, then it's just not worth it. All right, this hopefully was the last scarecrow. As you can see, the field is just too much of a strange shape. There's too many weird corners. The ponds don't help. You just get so much overlap for scarecrows. So you do get lots of protection, but look how many scarecrows it takes to protect this. So I guess we'll try and count these things. I'll do my best. Guess what? 21 scarecrows. That's right, 21. That's almost exactly the amount that the crows ate in three weeks. So conveniently, that's actually about the tipping point ratio of whether it's worth scarecrows or not. If your crop is going to be more than about three weeks or 21 days, scarecrows are worth it. If they're less than that, don't bother. If this video is any indication, and this might not be consistent with everyone else, but these are my results. The crows don't eat many in the first few days, but as the days go on, they seem to eat more and more. So for a crop like the ancient fruit, which takes a long time to grow, scarecrows are worth it. Some of the shorter growing crops like cauliflower, melons, the giant ones, whatever else, probably not worth it to have scarecrows because you need to put so many of them out. But I would use that as your benchmark, that if your crop is going to be more than 3 weeks or 21 days and you're worried about the crows, use scarecrows. If it's going to be less than that, don't bother, it's just not worth it. Like I said, it's just because of the weird shape of this field and the area that the scarecrows take up. There's just no good efficient way to fill this up. 
you might be able to improve a little bit on my design because I did not really take a whole lot of time to do this, but I just can't spend all day trying to get every spot. But I would be really surprised if you managed to improve by more than one or two scarecrows and that's still not enough to skew the results in any favor. I've got to say though, it is pretty nice to get a true blue scientific result for once. Usually my experiments end in, well, it's a matter of opinion whether you like this more or this more. No, this seems like pretty hard numbers. Three weeks is your tipping point. If your crop's going to be more than three weeks, it's worth it to have scarecrows. If it's less than that, don't bother. You're only wasting time and effort and losing money by putting less crops out. If there's anything I didn't think about or if any of my methodology is flawed, feel free to let me know and I will revise the video, but I think I did a pretty good job. This is one I've been wondering for a long time whether or not it was worth it. So the answer is that depends on how long your crop is going to grow. So that's obviously especially important for crops that go for all season like blueberries, strawberries, cranberries, ones like that, or even uh, some of the multi-season crops like the ancient fruit which I grew which will go through all three seasons along with coffee, whatever else. If it grows multiple seasons, use scarecrows. But that is also if you have a giant crop. If you have a smaller crop, results may vary. But if you have a smaller crop, you have room to place the scarecrows anyway because you don't need to maximize every single space. Again, don't forget about that giveaway. $100 Steam card. All you gotta do is leave a comment. You have nothing to lose. Just throw one down there. I'll pick in two days, pin the comment. Other than that, hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.